Hey, it's Matt here. Quick tutorial today. I'm going to show you how you can bring any documentation into the Replit workspace um, so that Replit AI has context and awareness of that documentation and can give you an accurate answer, even for things that models like Claude 3.5 Sonnet or GBT 4.0 might not have access to. And if you're unfamiliar, we recently added support for those models in our Replit AI. Um, but if you've used those tools before, you might know that for newer frameworks or kind of bespoke information, uh, questions might not have context or, or answers might not have context into the questions you ask. Um, and that can lead models to hallucinate or give you incorrect information. Um, so this is going to be a quick tutorial. I'm going to show you first how to pull documentation into the Replit workspace. Second, how to configure Replit AI. Um, to have knowledge of that documentation, and it's just a few clicks. And then third, I'm gonna share a template with you for recursively scraping documentation sites, converting those files to Markdown, and then uploading them into the Replit workspace to really fast track you on this one and get you started. Uh, so let's jump right into it. So now I'm in the Replit workspace, uh, and this is just a new Python REPL. So I have main.py over, not a ton of information. Um, and if I ask Replit AI, like, hey, maybe I'm investigating a new framework called FastHTML, um, and I've selected uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, and I say, hey, what is FastHTML? Um, and this is a Python framework that allows you to build front-end applications, but it's really new. Um, so it looks like uh, <laughs> it looks like Sonic doesn't really know, um, but I happen to have the FastHTML docs. And what I did was I took those, I went online, and then I scraped them converted them to markdown files. And by just dragging the folder of those markdown files here, you can see that now I have uh, some information about the library. And so now when I go to Replit AI and I click these um, files icon, you can see that AI code base knowledge is selected. I'm gonna click unselect all and then select all. Um, you can see that there is a limit for file memory, right? Uh, but the important thing is that the markdown files are included, or most of the markdown files are included. So, you know, like I could unselect that um, and add some other, uh, other files here. Um, so you just have to be a bit careful about how many files you're uploading. Uh, but now if I ask um, Replit AI what is fast, HTML, um, it has context over, over those docs. So it's going to perform a search using retrieval augmented generation. Um, and now <laughs> you can see, right, like <laughs> it actually apologizes, which Claude does not need to do, right? But it knows that fast HTML is a next generation web framework for building fast, scalable web applications with minimal compact code. Awesome. So it can tell you how to install fast HTML, how you can get started with a simple fast HTML application. So if I actually took that, paste it in here, and click Run, um, oop, we don't have fast HTML installed. So if I go to the shell and do a, like a poetry add fast HTML, um, oop, it's Python fast HTML. Poetry add Python fast HTML. Uh, we're going to install the, the application real quick and the dependencies using, po using poetry. We're going to click Run. Um, and then run is going to execute that main file. We're going to get uh, something on uh, 5001. And there you go. We have an application set up. So just like that, if you're trying to work with a new framework, um, adding the docs to a, a replit, uh, a folder in your REPL, um, and then indexing them using AI allows us to perform retrieval augmented generation over those files and surface irrelevant responses instead of AI saying it doesn't know. Um, or even worse, hallucinating, right? And so now you're probably saying, okay, Matt, like that's great. Where do I just get markdown files? <laughs> Where do I get markdown files for these docs? Um, and a lot of times, the first thing I'll mention is that a lot of times documentation is open source. So it always uh, is beneficial to check GitHub or see if the Git files for the docs are linked in the actual docs themselves. Um, but if you don't have access to that, I actually wrote a REPL that recursively scrapes subdomains for you. So we're going to switch over to that REPL, and I'll explain how it works. So this is the REPL. Um, it's called Docs2MD. I'll have a link to this in the description so you can fork it and use it for whatever you want. Um, and it's really simple. It uses a framework called Scrapey, Scrapey. Not sure how it's pronounced. Um, but the only setup you really need to do is replace this docs URL here with the uh, subdomain you want to scrape. Currently, this only supports um, formats like docs. Uh, replit.com, right? If you had uh, like replit.com slash docs, this this isn't configured. This isn't configured to scrape that currently, but that would be an easy fix. 
And then the second thing you're going to need to do is get a Gina API key, which is free. And it's free for a million tokens. And then you can refresh that API key by going to gina.ai slash reader. Um, it's really simple. Once you go to that page, the API key will be there. You click a button, you get it, and then you paste it in here. And then all you need to do here is click run. And this is going to spin up a new Scrapey instance. And um, it's asynchronous and multi-threaded, so it works pretty quickly. And you can see that we're taking the docs from replit.com. And this is recursively scraping the entire subdomain. So please, please do not take this and then DDoS our <laughs> documentation site. Um, I know some people that would be unhappy with me if you did that. Uh, but for use like this, if you're doing it once, it's totally fine. Um, and you'll notice that if I go into one of these files, it actually has uh, the markdown for, for the file uh, all stored here. So just like that, you can scrape documentation sites. And then once that's done, the three dot icon uh, in the top uh, left here will allow you to download this as a zip. So basically, you could run this REPL, get the documentation, uh, download it as a zip, upload it to your development REPL, and then use Replit AI to have context over all those, doc those docs. Um, and this is how I've been building with some newer frameworks. This is even how I've been building with existing frameworks that I want um, Claude or I want GBT to have in the forefront, forefront of their knowledge when I'm chatting with them. Um, so again, this is a quick tutorial on how you can uh, enhance the output of your docs with Replit AI. Hope you found it useful. Um, let me know what else you'd like to see. Until next time, peace.